What's up guys, your agent Tyler Wade Rung here and today we're going to talk more about HELOCs. More specifically, how to use HELOCs to buy investment properties. This is a key tool to the strategy I've used to buy over 20 rental units and I wouldn't have been here without it. So definitely want to talk to you about the pros, the cons, the things to look out for and just walk through an example of exactly how this works. So with that, let's jump in. Alright guys, so like I said before, we tell people all the time about how we buy rental properties and a lot of it has to do with the utilization of HELOCs or a home equity line of credit. A HELOC or a home equity line of credit is just a way to tap into the equity that you have into your house. Now equity by itself is really you know, the equivalent of poker chips at a casino. They definitely have value while you're sitting in the casino. But if you try to take a poker chip to McDonald's or Walmart, try to buy a Whopper, or uh, I guess that'd be a Burger King, try to buy a Big Mac or uh, groceries with that poker chip, it really means nothing until you cash it in and turn it back into a liquidable source or back into dollars, does it actually mean anything or hold any value. Equity is just the same. You can be sitting on hundreds of thousands of dollars in equity in your house, but you can't pay rent with that money, that equity. You can't go buy groceries with that equity. So it really doesn't mean anything until you cash it in or turn it into a liquidable source. So a HELOC is a way for you to do that, to convert some of your equity into the form of cash or credit that you can buy properties with or really you can buy anything with but I'm really advocating in this video for you to buy properties with you can really get in a lot of trouble if you go out there and start buying silly things with the equity in your home but yeah so a HELOC is just a tool to tap into a piece of your equity now you won't be able to tap into all of it because a bank wants to have some of that equity stuck in your property as their safety net this is why you have to put a down payment down when you buy a property. They want to have some wiggle room in case you stop paying and they have to foreclose on the house. They have something, you know, some gap there that they can sell the property for and either break even or make a little money or at least help them sleep at night with taking on the risk there. So while down payments can, you can get into very small down payments when you buy a house, usually when you're taking equity out on a house, banks usually want to stay around that 80% loan to value ratio. So what that means is that we're going to use a $100,000 house as an example here for easy math because I'm not good at public math as if you've seen any of my videos before you likely know. So if you have a house that's worth $180,000, an 80% loan to value would mean the bank would feel comfortable loaning $80,000 against that. So that loan to the $100,000 value here, that's where you come up with that. So why does that become important? So how you can use this is to try to figure out what your house is worth, you can, use, you can chat with a realtor, you can use Zillow just to come up with a ballpark figure and multiply that value times 0.8 and that will give you the amount that a bank will likely loan against that particular property. So let's go ahead and write that here. All right, so at $80,000, the bank is happy. They're able to go up to that $80,000 and feel good, check all the boxes, and feel like they have an adequate safety net in case of this $20,000 here, that's their safety net. If they had to foreclose and they owe 80, they could sell it for 100 and kind of get back out of that. But we won't go down that rabbit hole. So the bank is happy at $80,000 against this house. Well, let's say you bought this home for $60,000 a few years ago. That's what the market value was. And like anyone, if you bought a property in the last three years, it's currently 2021, you've likely seen a mass appreciation in your home. So let's say you bought the home for $60,000 a few years ago and you put $5,000 down when you bought the home. So you currently, when you purchased the home, had a $60,000 debt against the property. So you started here at 60k all right and since a couple years have went by let's just assume that over principal pay down you just making your normal mortgage payment you've actually paid this property down to fifty thousand dollars so that's the beauty with real estate is 
and my uh, proportions aren't right here on this graph. But the beauty with real estate is you kind of just set it and forget it and it, the mortgage balance starts to erode as you make these normal principal payments, okay? So right now, you owe $50,000 on a house that is worth $100,000. So now let's get into how does a HELOC come into play here and how can you use it to tap into a piece of this $50,000? All right, so this is the note that you have on it now, and we already said $80,000 is where the bank feels happy. So the difference between the two is the portion of equity that you have a good chance of being able to tap into. So in this example, we do 80 minus the 50, you have $30,000 in equity that you can likely tap into via home equity line of credit and have access to that cash to write checks against, to wire money from that account out of, to go and buy rental property with. So what does that mean? So $30,000 in liquid cash effectively means, now likely if you're purchasing rental property, you're going to have to put a minimum of 20% down. In most cases, you might have a, you know, a different, a unique case. But So if we were to put $30,000 down as a 20% down payment, that means we could purchase a $150,000 property uh, in theory, assuming you have adequate reserves and things of that nature. But basically, this takes you from a position of not having any access to this cash to now with the one tool, the HELOC, being able to go out and purchase a $150,000 rental property that you can hold and you can cash flow off of and start to build your rental property empire with. So that's the power of the HELOC, but there are a couple of things that you have to be aware of. All right, the first thing you want to be aware of is a HELOC. When you take this $30,000 out and put down on a property, that $30,000 becomes an interest-only payment, uh, sort of like a credit card rather than compared to a normal mortgage payment that has a principal pay-down aspect to it. It is interest-only, so the pro there is it's a little bit less than likely it would be if it was principal and interest, but the downside is if you continue to just make that minimum payment, you're never going to pay that balance off, and at the end of your HELOC term, which is usually 10 years or so, you have a balloon payment where you'll be required to pay the full balance at that time, which can become a little scary if that's something you weren't aware of. Also, the second thing you want to be aware of is that a HELOC is usually an adjustable rate interest rate. You know, this is also, also differs from a typical mortgage where you lock in a specific APR or percentage rate for a 30-year fixed rate. With a HELOC, this thing is going to adjust according to some other variables, but it's likely going to adjust on a monthly basis, and it will likely be a couple points higher than what you'd be used to on a long-term 30-year fixed note. So it is interest only and it's likely going to be a little bit higher interest rate than you're used to and it will adjust and change on a month to month basis. So for those reasons, I like to think of a HELOC as a short term financing tool. So you really need to be buying properties that are well below market value today or that you have a plan to drastically increase the value in the properties in the near future. You really need to be refinancing out of these HELOCs within a minimum of 12 months, or a maximum of 12 months rather. I likely don't like to stick in these things longer than 12 months. Then you have things like market shifts and other factors that could play in. If you can find a bank that does no seasoning, I like to start this process as soon as I close on it with a HELOC to get that refinance back out and have those HELOC funds become back available again. And the last thing I wanna point out here is with great power comes great responsibility. You really need to know what you're doing here. If you're using a HELOC to buy something else and that HELOC is on your primary residence and you're not able to pay that payment for whatever reason, the bank can foreclose on your primary home and kick you and your family out of there. So this isn't something to be taken lightly. You definitely need to do due diligence and understand what all you're getting yourself into. But I'm making this video, assuming you're a sophisticated investor, you have an idea of what you're doing, you just need a little bit more access to capital to execute on the plan that you have in your head and that you vet it out but you definitely wanna be cautious here when you're putting your primary residence on the line, especially if you have a family and are cutting things a little too close. So always keep that in the back of your mind. But with all that being said, if you are finding great deals and just don't have a way to buy them, this is an excellent tool. And it's a primary reason why I've been able to buy over 20 units at this point and growing. And the other beautiful part about this is that the snowball effect is definitely in place here. So you use this to buy this $150,000 house or whatever your next property 
property is and then that property starts to build equity and you're able to tap into that to buy more property that all continues to build equity and then you can start reaching out to other lenders local lenders to get portfolio lines of credit on your whole portfolio of properties that continue to just keep going so this is a great strategy to get started to get that snowball kicked down the hill but it does come with a lot of responsibility as well. But I hope this was helpful, guys. If you got anything from this, a like or subscribe would be greatly appreciated or just a share with somebody else who might be in a certain situation where you know they have equity, they're wanting to do more deals, but they just don't have the capital to execute. This is a great strategy to do that. And I'd be forever grateful if you could share with someone in that position. But as always, guys, Tyler Wayrung with Keller Williams, and we'll catch you next